What up, Fight World? It's your boy, Ego, and I'm back with some more boxing. Back with a brief news update to keep you guys all informed. Now, the WBC's Mauricio Suleiman, who stepped in after the late Jose Suleiman passed away, rest in peace, he just sent out via social media tomorrow, Friday the 11th, the status of the WBC middleweight division will be announced. And he mentioned Canelo and Gennady Golovkin and their handle on Twitter. So... I want to talk about this. That obviously means they've arrived at some conclusion, whether it's good or bad, whether the fight's going to happen or it's not going to happen. Obviously, something has been negotiated or decided. I obviously don't work for the WBC, so I don't know what it will be. But however, I want to talk about my thoughts on a potential fight with Canelo, Saul Alvarez, and Gennady. No, guys, Mox. Yeah, right, Mox. Golovkin. Now, one, we have to obviously bring up the idea of a catch weight. Weight would probably be the biggest um, roadblock or hindrance to negotiations. And that's really because Canelo, he's a big boy, but he's also the A-side in this equation. And he says, I want the, I was born ready. You know what I'm saying? He was born ready and he wants to fight at a catch weight of 155. Me, I tell you guys time and time again, very consistent. I am not a fan of catch weights in boxing. However, I am a boxing fan, and it's just a part of boxing. In today's landscape, it is what it is. You know what I mean? Pacquiao popularized it. Mayweather had one with Canelo. It's really what it is. It's just like seeing a good fight, and then the decision taints it. Like You know what I'm saying? Like Canelo, Lara, like Canelo, Lara, they had it 117-111. I know that wasn't the fight. I seen and that's something that boxing fans we always get screwed over with little things like this catch weights and poor decisions but if you watch boxing long enough you'll see these recurring themes so just like I expect on certain fights it to be a bogus decision I know catch weights is a reality I'm not saying I approve of it um, certain situations I, I take I tell you guys I take it on a case-by-case -case basis like I look at it like how old is the person are they late in their career trying to come down to a catch weight that they can barely even make the division they're in, things like that. And I take it by case-by-case -case basis, but I'm not a fan of them. Um, so obviously that's the biggest issue with Canelo versus Triple G. My thoughts is it, it's we've come a long way in boxing where people mandate and make their own rules. And um, if you're the quote-unquote A-side, you get to do whatever you want. Now, this has been the case. Some people attribute this and blame Mayweather, but I mean... Sugar Ray Leonard versus Marvin Hagler. Do your homework. Do your research. If you know boxing, there was basically the same thing. The thing is, Mayweather is, there's such a spotlight on him, highest paid athlete. He set all these benchmarks for uh, pay per view buys and tickets and live gates and all this, and he's outspoken. So the spotlight's on him. And he's in the social media age, this generation. Or actually, when he first started, he wasn't necessarily YouTube and stuff wasn't around, but he his career has lasted as long as a social media age, so he was able to usher in some new things so people get to see all of his interviews and interact and stuff so the game's different but Mayweather didn't create these rules but he's popular he's hated he loved and he popularized certain things like a side like people are, are saying the a side but this has always been the case in boxing you look at like I said Ray Leonard versus Hagler see who picked out the glove size see who picked out the ring size and the purse split it's all documented. Things like Sugar Ray Robinson, who's considered to be TBE, the greatest ever. He would oftentimes pull out at the last minute. They already had a fight in place, the date, the time, the opponent. And he would pull out and starve him like, you know what? I'm not fighting. I'm Ray Robinson. I'm not fighting unless you give me more money. So this A-side, egotistical, I call the shots has always been an issue or prevalent in boxing. Anytime boxing is very egocentric, you know what I mean? The guys, you can tell by the attitude, nobody wants to lose. Everybody's competitive for the most part and stuff like that. I mean, obviously you got some guys that are more humble than others, but it comes with the territory. When you're in a competitive sport like boxing, no one's really in it to lose that I know of, at least at the elite level, you know what I'm saying? So the biggest issue is obviously the weight. My thing is this, I'm not for catch weights. I think it's, it's, it's sad that the middleweight, lineal middleweight champion, gets to fight at his own weight. And some people could say that, oh, technically middleweight is 155 all the way to 160 and all that. Man, I mean, we know what it is. Like, it, it's, you can beat around the bush and, and use, like, technicalities or something. But as we know it, we know what we consider the true middleweight division, 160. 
And that's, it is what it is. You could say, oh, but technically it's 155, blah, blah, you know what I'm saying? But I'm not doing all that. We know what we consider middleweight, you know what I'm saying? And a, a fair fight and stuff like that. So, um, unfortunate, but that being said, I, I would say Triple G, he's 34 years old, I believe. He should do it. He should do it. Not saying that, I, I just feel like he, he should do it for the simple fact that what else is out there in the middleweight division? This is clearly the biggest fight, and I'm, I'm the type of person to pick your poison. You pick your poison, and you cannot meet his needs and not fight him, but then you're stuck fighting Sebastian Hyland, Toriano Johnson. You know what I mean? Who knows if you could fight Al Heyman fighters because I don't know what K2's business relationship is, and then you have the network issues. Um, they obviously got some new people in position at HBO. So maybe, maybe Heyman fighters can come back on HBO. So an Edis Landi Lada fight, a uh, fight with, um, Andy Lee, maybe Andy Lee Saunders winner, maybe Danny Jacobs. I'm not sure, but none of those people bring the audience that Canelo brings. And I think Triple G for his resume's sake, he needs, the only thing he's lacking is a proven like elite level or someone we consider to be really good this person's never been stopped or this person has all this momentum. He's on a three, four, five win streak. You know what I'm saying? He's a belt holder. These types of things. Like I keep bringing it up the best name on his, his resume, David Lemieux, who never had the opportunity to defend his title. He just went straight for the gusto and fought and got whooped up by triple G. Uh, Martin Murray, the guy who wasn't a champion because he lost to Sergio Martinez, controversial, but he still lost and never was acclaimed the champion. Um, he lost to Felix Sturm or half win, half draw, or half win, half loss because it was a draw. You know what I mean? Bottom line is he didn't, he never got to live like a champion and have the confidence of a champion. So to me, um, I just kind of look at the greater good. I think Triple G versus Canelo, even at a catchweight, even though I don't like the catchweight, it's still good for boxing. And it'll still show me some things about both fighters. Like, really, how good is Canelo? Like, you know what I mean? Cotto's not, Cotto, that was a great win for him. Um, I thought he won all the way, but Canelo's pretty damn big. You seen Cotto couldn't even hurt him. You know what I mean? And then other than that, Canelo at the elite level lost to Mayweather, one-sided wipeout, unless your name is CJ Ross. The Trout fight, a bit controversial. Edislandi Lada fight, definitely controversial. So let's see how he looks against a, an elite level person. But clearly Canelo at the point, at the moment is the A-side and has the better resume, in my opinion. You've stepped in with the TBE, number one pound-for-pound pound dude in Mayweather. You beat an undefeated Trout, um, Lada, and Cotto. You know what I'm saying? It's better than any names on um, Triple G's resume. And that's just really a fact. I don't even see how anyone can argue. So to me, I don't like to catch weight, but I think for the greater good and the good of the sport and what it will do for Gennady Golovkin's career, I think he should do it. I don't know what the decision is, but I will keep you guys posted, make a follow-up video. Um... Boxing's crazy, you know what I'm saying? Now it's, it's a bunch of A-side and stuff. I just, man, I hope this fight is made just because I don't want to see them both fight like lesser competition. Like you just beat Cotto, a first round Hall of Famer, a legend, you know what I'm saying? Gennady Golovkin, you just beat David Lemieux who was at least considered to have a big chance, a puncher's chance, you know what I mean? A little bit bigger than average puncher's chance because he, he can crack, you know what I mean? So I don't want to see either guy really backpedal, fight with each other. It makes business sense. It makes a lot of dollars for both fighters. Boxing fans would love it, even at the catchweight. So I think for the greater good, even though I'm not a fan of catchweights, hopefully this fight's made. Um, instead of, this is me, if if I had to, like let's say I'm the WBC, is Ego Suleiman. The, the deal that would be great for me is if they met in the middle, like, Again, not a big fan of catchweights, but if they met at 157, 158, that's a little bit more realistic than 155. But to make the man drop down 160, that's a bit harsh. Um, even the title won by Canelo that was originally won by Cotto in the Sergio Martinez, that was even fought at a catchweight of 159, which is only one pound. So it is what it is. But hopefully they can make something that makes sense. And the other thing is, it's boxing so crazy that it's hard to feel like super sympathetic for any of the top level fighters because a lot of them do the same types of things. People, oh, Mayweather did this, Pacquiao did this, but Canelo and Triple G do things too. Canelo's last, I since actually, since maybe Austin Trout, I think every single Canelo fight has been at a catchweight, at a catchweight. Um, Mayweather fight, 
was it a catchweight? Alfredo Angulo, Edis Lani Laura, James Kirkland, and then Cotto. That's like four fights in a row at a catchweight. Same thing with Gennady Golovkin. He's not necessarily guilty of the catchweight issue, but he's guilty of him and his team double backing, saying, oh, we'll fight Frotch at this. We'll fight Frotch or Chavez at the full 168. No problem. Guys, not a problem. I'm ready now, not for future. And then when it came to Andre Ward, nah, we'll fight him at a catchweight. Like, why you fight the... The, the cream of the crop at a catchweight who's not the lethal puncher like Frotch is considered, you know what I mean, a granite chin, very solid, big puncher. You know what I'm saying? Why are you going to fight the, the pillow-fisted Andre Ward at a catchweight? Same thing with Mayweather. You say you want to fight Mayweather, but you you said you'll go down to 154, 155 for Mayweather, but you don't want to go to 155 for Canelo. Now, Canelo, I'm not going to say he brings in as much money as Mayweather, but He's up there. I mean, the dude's up there. They did about a mil with Cotto. So coming off of that win and the David Lemieux performance at Triple G, I think this would beat the numbers for um, Canelo Cotto because I was actually surprised on the Cotto Canelo fight. They were booing Cotto. A lot of people were booing him. But if they fought in, like, let's say the MGM in Las Vegas, I think Triple G would have a good turnout as well as obviously Canelo every time he's been at the MG MGM with Mayweather or Vegas for the Cotto fight, he always had a good turnout. So realistically, that I think the crowd would probably be pretty split. So you, you'll make a lot of money. You'll make a pretty penny with uh, fighting Canelo. You know what I'm saying? May not be Mayweather money, or but I think it'll do better than Cotto versus Canelo. That's my thoughts. Let me know what you guys think. Catch weight, no catch weight. Should the fight happen? If not, who do you want to see each person fight? Drop it all in the comment section. Make sure you like my video as always. Hate, comment, and subscribe. Till next video is Ego signing off. If Canelo's the champ at 160, you got to fight him at 160. I don't want to hear about no catch weight, 155, 157. I want to hear it. If you want to fight Gennady Golovkin, you got to go up to that man's weight and fight him. When I was coming up, we didn't have catch weights. So if you want to fight the man, he the man up there, you got to go up and fight him. So if you enjoyed this video and want more content like this on the channel, you can show your appreciation by going to the PayPal donate button or the YouTube support button. And you can donate any amount that you feel is equivalent to the value of this video. Much more to come. Thank you guys for your support. Boxing Ego, the future of boxing.